Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Informatica World 2016. Brought to you by Informatica. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Peter Burris. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE. You're watching SiliconANGLE Media's theCUBE, our flagship program where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host, Peter Burris, head of research at SiliconANGLE and general manager of Wikibon Research. Our next guest is Yelena Rolievich, who's the assistant vice president of business intelligence at George Washington University. Welcome to theCUBE, thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so, um, obviously you're a practitioner in the trenches, university environment, very fluid, a lot of IT, a lot of things going on from student activities to you know, running the university. Share with us the, the, the data picture. What's it like there? What's some of the things that you guys got going on there? Okay, uh, so uh, higher education has lots of data. We collect information on our prospects, on our current students, uh, on their uh, life at the university, how they interact with library, how do they come to uh, sport events and games, that all helps us understand the engagement of a student and informs uh, any uh, changes in our activities that we have to make to retain those students and make them succeed and become new world leaders. So we have, uh, and the way universities have grown organically, you have data in many pockets of those organizations. And I come to higher education from working about 20 years in the government uh, consulting business. So I was actually very surprised to find out how complex universities are. George Washington University in particular being a city school at the heart of DC, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's like running a small municipality. So you can imagine we have every Every data the, uh, type that can be uh, a lot of silos, I can imagine, and lots of silos. You know, uh, I mean, uh, we have uh, at least three ERPs: uh, one for our financial data, the other that houses our students' information, and then lots of data on spreadsheets and etc. So what we've done, what GW have done uh, about 10, 15 years ago, is started and uh, built, started to build the enterprise data warehouse. Uh, but it was very tactical, you know, the reporting information was really at a very tactical level and we needed to get that uh, value from this, from data all the way to our executive leadership and other decision makers across the university. So uh, about three and a half years ago, we started um, actively engaging with our business uh, functional areas, uh, you, you know, and uh, change our uh, project management methodology to really being fully agile. You know, we are uh, on two week cycles using Scrum. Uh, we bought Tableau as our data visualization tool. We already had co IBM Cognos in the environment, but we just needed something that's easier for our end user community to use. Uh, our goal is uh, BI as a self-service. So my team is working on integrating uh, data from a variety of different systems, ensuring data quality. We also uh, kicked off a data governance program and that's working very well. We tied our data governance program to our business intelligence efforts uh, because business intelligence efforts had uh, momentum and support behind it. And to uh, showcase the value of data governance uh, and, and Get, convince our data stewards to actually support uh, work of data governance. Uh, we tied it uh, to BI, so basically we are, our, our mantra is if uh, it's important and, and we are asked to put, it in, put data in the dashboards and reports, then it's important data we should maintain and manage. So then we make sure before we publish these uh, solutions that every data element and any assumptions we made are documented in our data governance tool. So you have, I mean, do the students have mobile devices that you provide yes. and apps, so you have data coming from the mobile devices? Uh, we have uh, bring your own device, uh, any device you, you can imagine out there, you know, policy, and that is very interesting uh, challenge to manage. I think on average every student brings about six devices. Yeah. That includes, in addition to their phone and uh, tablet, uh, uh, you know, and computer, their PlayStation, their, you know, game box, their TV. They have all their apps, Netflix. like Yik Yak and all these crazy exactly, apps. Exactly, exactly. So you, you ban Yik Yak? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> My 
daughter reinforms me what's being said about uh, GW <laughs> whenever she sees something like that. So, uh, you know, we get uh, all kinds of uh, devices on our yeah. network. Uh, and uh, our students are, of course, digital natives more and more, and uh, they really love some of the dashboards that we are so putting So the edge up. of the network is very robust. You have yes. end users using yes. all kinds of apps, yes. very diverse. You bring your yes. own device to work. I'm sure you got a bunch of IoT, but the thing that you guys live every day is this siloed concept of different systems. Yes. Now you have remote campuses too, so you have to move yes. across Yes. Uh, geography we, or we have networks. also lots of in, we have international campuses. We we have uh, uh, campuses in China. We have uh, you know uh, in the DC vicinity several campuses. Foggy Bottom out being our main one, but uh, we have our graduate programs. Uh, uh, in Virginia, we have uh, Mount Vernon campus and quite a few other locations throughout the city. So as you sit back and modernize, the, the, the theme mm. here is modernize your data, data 3.0, all that stuff, all mm. that good stuff, I mean it's messaging, but the impact to you is you have real systems to traverse. Yes. You have to expose the data and move it across different uh, networks and or geography, certainly international. How do you guys approach that? Do you guys get on the whiteboard, is it pretty obvious? Is it trial and error? You said it's agile. Uh, what's the approach? How do you solve that problem? Because that's a really um, kind of current use case that most people face. Yeah, we, we do have our enterprise architecture team that helps look into current state and helps us understand what, what the situation looks like, what devices and applications we already have, how we move data between those applications, lots of point-to-point -point integrations. That's one thing uh, I, uh, uh, it's on my to-do goals to change. Uh, you know, using uh, Informatica, we have power center on-prem on and in the cloud. Uh, and uh, we are working with our power, uh, Informatica partners on uh, on building the true data integration platform. So I was very excited mm -hmm. with what I heard this morning uh, at the general session. Um, so we also uh, uh, work very closely with our business functional users. We try mm -hmm. to understand uh, their business, their needs for information, which continuously change because higher education is also highly regulated industry, so you, uh, you know, have those pressures, but also, you know, we are dealing with uh, new generation that is every day. The regulation, which is its own challenge, which is in and of itself, the regulation of the data, but also it's interesting is that you have real consumers. Yes. And this whole <laughs> consumerization of IT, which we, we talk a lot, of, a lot about, is real. Most yeah. businesses can actually go slower than higher ed, but on the edge of the network, you've got real consumers yes. who want consumer experiences. Yes. And you've got the highly regulated infrastructure. How do you balance that? What, what's, the, what's the, how do you guys do that? <laughs> it must be really hard. Well, well it, can I add one thing before you answer that? Because yeah. it, it's, it's your, most important consumers are some of the most aggressive users of these new technologies. Yeah. I think I think all businesses yeah. have to do this. But one of the things that's interesting about higher ed is, as you said it, is that to attract students, you have to demonstrate your affinity for the way that they want to do things yeah. and translate the way you know learning into mechanisms and systems and programs that they find attractive and they immerse themselves in. So let's let's add yeah. that to yeah. the answer. Yeah, that's definitely a very complex problem, and uh, I think uh, the way we address that, as I said, through enterprise architecture, to talking closely with our business on a regular basis, we have these portfolio meetings, we have uh, uh, governance across the board, uh, trying to prioritize the most important uh, efforts that the business needs to put in place, uh, you know, by trying to uh, having a very dedicated teams, uh, I think that having a stable infrastructure uh, um, that's uh, st stabilized across uh, several uh, past years, uh, and you know, constantly innovating and constantly looking, going more agile, so we can deliver on the top priorities, uh, and hopefully. Uh, 
get enough out there to support our business with attra attracting students and recruiting students. We are deploying a CRM system uh, across the board. Students. And keeping students, absolutely. And one of the things my team is focusing on right now is the retention yeah. uh, effort and, and student success rate. I mean, we're building a future leaders of the world and we want to make sure they come to GW. They have some great opportunities there, I mean, uh, to for internships, etc. but they also have some great opportunities yeah. to go other places. <laughs> Today's students are tomorrow's alumni. Exactly. So as you think about, as you think about this challenge, uh, you're in the technology organization, yes. and it's forced you to partner with a whole range of institutions within the university. How is the relationship, your relationship, to the different parts of the university and those decision makers starting to evolve? Uh, I think we have a very good track record. Uh, as I said, uh, I spend most of my time working with business. Although I'm physically located, the division of IT is physically located in our Virginia campus, I spend pretty much my entire week uh, in downtown DC talking with uh, head of enrollment, with provost, who is a big fan of data and constantly is, uh, you know, watching for trends. And it's, it's a very, uh, and I don't want to go because it will take us a couple of days to go into the whole process of recruiting and attracting and and you know um, uh, getting building your new coming class and you know uh, um, watching this melts because you you know that not all students will yeah. will come and and planning you're at the whim of uh, 17, 18 year olds and you have to plan the housing for those kids, you have to plan, uh, you know, and of course you you have to make the class that you uh, expect to make. So it's it's a very complex problem and we, our, our business constituents needs lots of data. Our research, GW just broke into top 100 research institutions. Our researchers need information to manage their grants. They're accountable for how they're spending their money and they need the real-time mm -hmm. information to know what their current budget looks like, how much they spend, what they have to uh, sp yeah. uh, spend, uh, you know, how far are they, are they getting any additional funding to their grants, uh, who's working on their tasks. All of those things in the past were very um, uh, static, uh, and now we were able to get them some cool uh, tools, visual uh, insights into their information that they can, that can use to make informed decisions, and then their deans and department chairs also can look at that data and, and uh, you know, uh, act on that information. And uh, you know, they use data for use cases yeah. I have never imagined. Yeah. Uh, you know, we can use. I, I'm curious. Just kind of side note here, just kind of tangent on the on the question is. Uh, being in IT and being in technology, you're enabling all this data and they're using data in use cases you've never seen before. Are you getting pulled into the whole e-learning concept? Because now we're hearing that having courseware online isn't uh -huh. e-learning anymore. Uh -huh. The students themselves are finding non-linear progressions to data that may or may not reside in the university and does that put pressure on the delivery of the education? Have you been pulled into that? Can you share some insight into some of the dynamics? Uh, uh, it's a real problem. <laughs> People are scratching their heads going, hmm, it is. what's a better learning environment, the internet or? Uh, and there are those debates, uh, and, and you can imagine, you know, uh, I, I'm learning about higher education uh, I, I inner workings myself, and and I'm amazed by by questions our faculty is asking and our administrators is asking. So. Uh, we uh, have a group that's focused on online education. I don't necessarily uh, sit at that table, uh, maybe not yeah. yet. But <laughs> <laughs> Soon, maybe. But, but we definitely are looking in better ways to uh, yeah. enhance students' experience. And it's not just uh, taping a course and, and yeah. providing it online. It's, uh, it's being able to interact with these students yeah. and, and customize their experience and answers you're providing based on types of questions and their skill set and you know that they're bringing to the table for that course so you know otherwise you lose uh, lots of students who are probably uh, who cannot uh, who cannot follow the the uh, program, which is something in a classroom you can yeah. correct. Oh, man, the reality is right around the corner. You got VR, virtual reality, and you got AI kind of bots coming. I can see that kind of happening and connecting those dots. But the other thing that's interesting is is that you're starting to see 
um, the listening, we heard the marketing cloud announcement here mm -hmm. around using uh, listening engines, and we know that we've reported on our, on our publication that you know, on the admissions side, they're looking at their Facebook posts and saying, mm -hmm. do we want that person? This is the application, yeah. they're valedictorian, yeah. looking good, but all of a sudden look at their Facebook or Twitter feed or <laughs> Instagram feed, different data. Yeah. So the digital footprint now is interesting. Is that come into the mix at all? Or? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. My own daughter was uh, applying for uh, college uh, this uh, year. She's high school senior. And she told me, mom, I cannot, we were on vacation. And she said, I cannot check, uh, you know, um, uh, my uh, re university response because I have to come from the same IP address. Because in order to predict is this student really going to come? The schools are starting to, to, to look at the entire profile of that student and it's tying it to the IP address so they can say this kid came to visit in the, the college, this kid, uh, you know, clicked this many times on the different information. Downloaded about, a podcast uh, or exactly, a video tour. Exactly, exactly. So, so you're trying to, it, it, the, the space is becoming very competitive, you know, there are all these debates out there about higher yeah. education, the value of higher education, the cost of higher education. So universities are really uh, using data to try to predict who is uh, really good going fit. to come and a who is going fit. to fit as well. Yeah. Yes, I mean, one of the things that uh, we are looking in our uh, uh, retention uh, modeling is uh, can I predict uh, how, uh, what kind of experience students will have if they're coming from this high school versus that high school, depending did they enroll in engineering or did they enroll in art and sciences? And can I immediately offer them more support or you know, maybe some additional classes? You can tell by the metadata if they're really interested. Yes. And we have uh, kids in, in high school, I have two in college and two still coming through. Peter's got a daughter. And this is interesting. A lot of people say, oh, this is a safety school. And schools can actually figure out, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like okay, we know you're mailing this one in. But this is, the, this is the value of the data now. You can actually look at it. And, and the other discussion in the high, high school is um, it's not so much academic being the best and you know, checking off your yeah, you know, you overseas want the whole person. Uh, community service. <laughs> no, they want a fit. fit. Fit is now the discussion in high school for colleges. Mm -hmm. Don't be so hung up mm -hmm. on the, the D1 yes, and all these yes, different yes. schools. Find the fit. How does that impact you guys? You guys being asked to provide more data sharing or? Yeah, um, definitely, definitely. We need, uh, our admission offices <laughs> need more data. As I said, we are putting CRM in place because our current ways of interacting with students are failing short. Uh, you know, trying to get that whole picture and to understand how good of a fit that student is and, and is it going to actually show up in summer or, or you know, or is it just going to melt? So I have a question that's a provocative question, so you know, lean back and think about this one. <laughs> lean back, then lean in. Lean in, <laughs> lean back, lean in. Think about this, so people who are watching, who want, are interested in higher ed, some of the innovations, what would you share with them? Spend a minute talking about some of the innovations that uh, you guys are doing in higher ed, and higher ed in general, that you are excited about, that could be for a parent or for a student watching, that they may not know about. What are some of the exciting things that are happening? Um, hmm. innovation-wise? Uh, well, uh, I think in GW in particular, some of our uh, research facilities that we're putting in place and equipped with the, with the technology that I have not seen when I went to school and I, I have an engineering background, uh, I think make me very excited. You know, I get very excited just walking into that building. Uh, our ability to, uh, as you said, uh, uh, customize their experience, to their interests and needs because we have information about their interests and needs. I think that's also amazing. It's something we didn't have uh, when I was growing up and, yeah, and, and until recently. You're one of millions of people and, in, a, and, in a lecture hall. Until recently. <laughs> uh, so those things really excite me, you know. Uh, just uh, just the, the, the sheer uh, amount of information that we have today on their social uh, interactions, uh, uh, that I don't think we are tapping in yet, especially uh, not to the degree I would like to tap in. I, I mean, I would like to uh, offer uh, incoming freshmen uh, 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 interesting uh, plays at our learner uh, uh, center for uh, performing arts. I want to put the right uh, type of uh, displays in a textile museum, but if we know more about these kids and 
I mean, they're amazing by the virtue of being 17 and 18 year olds. I mean, yeah. they have all these interests. They will self-organize. They will start to so dance. So providing some discovery, really, yes. for them. But really. they, they are, they are, yeah, they, they, they live in, in discovery mode. They, they look at the world. So giving them, uh, you know, looking at our library, for example, who also wants to understand uh, who's coming and what are they, what services they're uh, looking in the library, so they can improve those services and maybe offer others that they are not offering today. So I think in every aspect we can help uh, students get, have a better experience, uh, graduate sooner, and really become a world uh, well, leader. Well, there's also it's also interesting that there have been. 50, 60, 80 years of research and investigation into how people learn, and we still don't know. <laughs> uh, there's been all these different models of pedagogy. Yes. Uh, some people learn by doing, some people learn cognitively, yes. some people learn by blah, 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 blah. And over and over, they've been proven wrong. And it's going to be interesting to actually have data mm -hmm. that yeah. actually speaks to how people learn, and over the next five, 10 years, have that be translated into real programs that are probably better attuned to how people learn. I've Fascinating, you're at the forefront of that. How are you using Informatica? So we have uh, Informatica Power Center on premise that that is both on premise and in the cloud uh, that we are using to do our ETL nightly loads. Uh, we have a, a data quality tool that uh, we just recently uh, this year purchased and installed, and we are offering a data quality services to all our constituents at GW, profiling data, you know, addressing data quality issues. Uh, we are uh, communicating to our businesses how expensive the poor data quality is, and I think they are becoming very understanding of those type of issues. Uh, we also have Informatica Cloud that we use for data integration across our different systems and to exchange information with external partners. Uh, uh, we are looking forward to use uh, Informatica for master data management, which is uh, 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 on our uh, to-do list. To-do list, exactly. <laughs> so that's that's basically where we are with. Don't Informatica. need a lot of data to choose that one. <laughs> no, but as I said, we started Data Warehouse uh, GW uh, was it started a couple 10, 15 years ago. So I think we uh, are. We did some work, we, we now understand our data. I think uh, uh, I'm hearing lots of my colleagues are you know, starting with master data management. Uh, I, I do think that tying it to the real use cases, which is if you really need this data to make decisions, that's probably important data you should care about. That's, great, great, uh, yeah. that's a great little rule of thumb. Awesome. Thank you. Well, I got to ask the final question. What, what got you excited for the conversation here? I mean, anything pop out of, uh, of the keynotes that uh, you made a mental note of that you're going to focus in on that's exciting? Absolutely, you know, I mean, uh, I, I attended the keynotes yesterday, uh, as, uh, you know, that was exciting uh, for, on multitude of levels, you know, hearing uh, the, the, about data 3.0 that Informatica is focusing on. I mean, what I, uh, in hearing this morning and seeing some of the demos on the, uh, you know, um, the data mapping and, and you know those aspects but what excites me another thing that excites me excited me yesterday was a conversation between tableau and informatica and the partnership that they're having i mean both of those are our vendors so i'm very happy to hear to yeah. see that they're talking and collaborating because that will make hopefully our life easier yeah. uh, you know if they're co coordinating their roadmaps um, I, I, what I like about Informatica is it's focusing on data. It's really not going in every uh, direction. direction out yeah. there that we've seen some other vendors going. They're really focused on uh, creating this uh, central place where you can get the, uh, the quality information. The value of data. The, the value the of data. Focus, and yeah. when I look at my team, although we do visualizations, uh, and, uh, we are also pushing a self-service model. We want our functional users across the university to answer their questions, uh, business users, easily. That's one of the reasons why we chose Tableau and our, we have a community of BI practitioners that has about 70 users today. Uh, I mean, we, all, we have like 4,000 employees, so we are not a huge entity. So 70 users is a lot of folks who can go and tap into that uh, 
well integrated, high quality information and answer their own questions, uh, having good data governance so they understand what that information is about and how it's defined. And uh, that's where I, uh, what I, uh, where I think the biggest value is and where I think my team provides the most value in working in that space. Yeah. Uh, so our end users can really self-serve themselves and not depend uh, on our queue and uh, yeah. you know and our order of priorities. We still continue to support the yeah. broader, larger initiatives, uh, but we would prefer to have our housing department do their own visualizations yeah. using a data. Because they're, they're, the, they're the customer. Exactly, yeah. they're the customer. Yolan, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE and sharing the insights and the data here <laughs> in the moment. Uh, in real time <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> at Informatica World. Yelena Rolyovich, thank you so much uh, from George Washington University sharing the challenges and opportunities around being real time, consumerization, and breaking down the silos. This is theCUBE, live in San Francisco. We'll be right back.